Hello again folks, this is another short video this Saturday morning. Uh, I've got another new acquisition which I want to show off and crow about. <laughs> no, really I don't. Uh, yeah, maybe I do. <laughs> no, I just thought you might find it interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm quite excited by it. It'll take a bit of time um, to fix up, but what we have here, wrapped in a bit of oily bubble wrap, is a Myford 7 Series um, Collet Chuck. Uh, as you can see here, we have a internal thread in there. I don't know if you'll see it, I'll try and focus it a bit better. You can see that there's an internal thread in there. Now, um, this this um, in internal diameter fits on, fits on the register of the spindle or the lathe and then here we have the, the thread which threads on the, the nose of the spindle um, so um, you take the, the three or the four jar chuck off and then this fits on in place I I think it fits on in that sort, sort of orientation um, on the ML7 anyway I think the Super 7 possibly could be... Oh, fuck. It's, there's a bit of weight in this, so bear with me. I've got to be careful because of the glass top. But and I think that the Super 7 fits more in that sort of orientation. Um, the reason I say that is because um, this um, threaded bracket here at the back, I believe that is compatible with the Super 7. I don't believe this is compatible with the ML7, so I'll have to strip that away and fabricate uh, the correct um, uh, hinge brackets to suit the ML7. Now, for those of you that know the you know machining, then you'll be quite fam or, or familiar with my Ford. You'll be probably quite familiar with these things. Um, but for those of you that are maybe new, um, Basically, um, what you do is once that the the sorry once the whole assembly is mounted on your lathe, uh, this retaining um, screw or retaining um, nut, uh, although it's not in the shape of a, a standard nut, uh, it just unscrews off eventually. Quite a fine thread, I think. Come on. There we go. So you can see that there's a, a reasonably fine thread there. Um, and all you do is uh, you get these little collets. They're like, um, I don't know how you describe a collet. They've got an, they're, they're basically like a bit of pipe, but with slots cut down the length of them, and they're they're shaped in such a way that they're splayed out slightly. Well, they're not actually splayed out, but there is a a, a taper, which uh, on the one end of them, which um, is larger than the, 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 the taper in here. You'll, you'll see there's a slight taper in here, yeah? So, when your collet goes into the, the inner bore or your collet chuck, the, the taper keeps the, the collet slightly proud of this face, okay? And what you do then is you, you Put the the nut on slack. Like, you know, you can do it slack, yeah. And then you can fit your milling cutter inside your collar. A lot of people just, you know, it doesn't matter which way about you do it. Really, it well it depends. You know, um, sometimes you've got to do it before you put the the, the nut on. Other times you don't. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work with this uh, collar chuck yet. I've not used it, but in general, that's what that's what that's the situation. So. 
Um, your your milling cutter is inside your collet, and your collet is is uh, seated on this taper here, yeah. Um, and when the the the, the nut goes over it and it uh, tightens up, that forces, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably this little uh, raised uh, face here, that forces the collet down into the taper, causing the the uh, the prongs, if you like, of the collet to close somewhat, yeah, and that grips your grips your uh, milling cutter. A uh, through friction alone, but it's sufficiently uh, strong enough for you to uh, cut metal with. So anyway, that's a, a, a short explanation of a call it chuck. Um, I'm not too sure what these little uh, teeth here are for. Uh, I don't see anything inside the the um, the nut. I'm thinking there's maybe a part missing. There should have been some sort of mechanism that would click over those teeth to help prevent the the nut from um, coming loose during operation. So I don't know about that. I'll need to investigate that slightly. I've looked at quite a lot of pictures of these over the you know the last day. Uh, six to twelve months and I, I think I remember something about that so I'll need to look at that um, I'm fairly sure there's maybe a spring clip inside here or something um, so I only got this yesterday I've not had a chance to examine it yet so that's that's something I'm um, hmm, concerned about I guess um, so um, Oh yeah, um, the, you know, obviously there's a lot more to the chuck than just this um, uh, inner uh, working. Um, as you can see, the whole thing seems to be uh, loose. Now, obviously, um, this uh, part will be secure on the, the spindle. Okay. But the, the purpose of this lever is to cause the, the oh, hold on here, let me get this right. These link arms or linkage arms, they secure um, the outer body from moving in a forwards direction when this arm is depressed in the inwards direction okay and what that causes is that causes a sort of it's like a hen uh, it's like this acts as a fulcrum basically okay and this is your lever and it, it acts like a not a hinge but it helps lift this mechanism, uh, the outer, uh, oh, is it the outer? The, oh, I'm sorry folks, I can't remember. <laughs> I'll need to uh, look that up a little bit. Um, but uh, it helps you to release the, the collet, the, the pressure on the collet quickly, so that you can slip the, the collet out and then just push a new collet in and um, well that's what I believe anyway so and I need to do a little bit of looking into how it you know um, works fully but that's the general pr principles behind it um, so yeah um, I where's my tea gone I've got a, a small um, vertical milling um, attachment for the lathe now you know just for the boys that was watching this that are actual real machinists you know i'm talking about a table that's not much larger than my hand right you know and i've got small hands there eh? so um you can't achieve 
large um, or do large projects or large um, components on on that ML7. It's a small lathe, and the milling is going to be even uh, more uh, restricted. But if you want, I'll say maybe cut a T slot and a bit of metal, or uh, possibly um, a keyway, then this collet chuck in combination with the the milling table uh, gives you that functionality with your lathe. Last year I was working in a, on a site uh, locally here and there's this uh, a plumber, a um, wannabe pilot and he scoffed at me when I said that you could uh, mill on a lathe. He said you can't, he, he told me that you can't turn square objects on a lathe either. Well, so it'll prove you wrong, but you can. Um, there's so many people that have a belief that something can't be done, that when somebody comes along and says it can be done, they ridicule and mock the person that's actually more informed than they are and that really pisses me off I just you know I know and they think they know so more fool them eh? I'm not going to start ramping it's too early in the morning I'm going to go and get my breakfast and then I'm going to go and get the other part of this off the motorbike and then first opportunity I get I'm going to get it welded back on well welded together and then the, the, the whole assembly back on I'll maybe have a, a look at this as well so right um, signing off now folks hope you found this informative and until next time, bye for now.